All right, so let's work through the review of quadratics. Um, I'm not going to work through the entirety of the review. I'm only going to work out the odd number problems or the ones I feel are relevant. That's a must know, right? So number one, uh, negative x minus 2 squared minus 4. Uh, the vertex is going to be the opposite of whatever these numbers are here, these values. So x minus 2, so plus 2. And then negative 4 is outside, or minus 4 is outside, so minus 4. <clears throat> so here's my x and y. So 2, negative 4. Here's my vertex. Axis of symmetry lives on the vertex, or vertex lives on the axis of symmetry, rather. Um, it's a vertical line through the vertex. The axis of symmetry. It's a vertical line through x equals 2. The max and min value is the y value at the max or min. Because this is negative, it's going to open downward. So I know that the vertex is the max for sure. So the y value at the max is y equals negative 4. The domain, it's quadratic, so it's all real numbers, always. And the range is going to go from the max towards one of the infinities. Because it opens downward, it opens towards negative infinity. So we're going to say the range is going to be from negative infinity up to and including 4. All right, y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So when we plug in x equals 0, we're going to get negative 2 squared minus 4. All right, so negative, negative 2 squared minus 4. So negative 2 squared is going to be 4. So negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So when x is 0, y is negative 8. We reflect that across the axis of symmetry. We get a parabola that looks like this. All right. Let's get number 2, number 3. 2 times x minus 2, x minus 6. Okay. So a couple things we can do here. So in this form, intercept form, this tells us where the x-intercepts are. So the x-intercepts are at x equals 2 and x equals 6. So x equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. x equals 2, x equals 6. All right. The axis of symmetry is going to be exactly in the middle. So vertical line at x equals 4. So at x equals 4, I know the vertex will be on that vertical line, right? So at x equals 4, let's plug that into the original and see what we get. So 2 times 4 minus 2, 4 minus 6. So this is going to be 2, negative 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 6. So negative 6. That's where the vertex is going to be. All right, so when we plug in 4, we're going to get negative 6, that's the vertex. 4, negative 6. The min or max value, so this is going to open upward. It's going to open upward. So the vertex is a min at y equals negative 6. The domain, all real numbers, right, because it's quadratic. 
the range is going to go from the vertex up towards infinity. So vertex starts at negative 6, including negative 6, all the way up to infinity. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So 2 times 0 minus 2, 0 minus 6. So 2 times negative 2 times negative 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So 24. The y-intercept is x is 0, y is 24. Okay. All right, moving right along. Right, let's look at number five. Uh, let's look at, or let's do the AC method, I feel. AC method would work. So slide and divide, I guess. So eight times... Right. You can use whatever technique you want, actually. Quadratic formula, completing the square, whatever technique, right? Unless it says specifically, like, for instance, 14 says complete the square. So here it just says factor. It doesn't matter how we factor. Whatever technique works best for you. So I think the AC method works well. So 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 7. So I need two numbers that multiply to make negative 8, but add up to 7. So what two numbers? So 8 and 1. Actually, 8 and negative 1. Right, 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 8 plus negative 1 is 7. So 8 and negative 1. So 8x squared plus 8x minus x minus 1. So I'm splitting up this middle term in such a way that it's going to allow me to factor this thing. So right, 8x minus 7x, or 8x minus x is 7x. So if we split this down the middle and only look at the left side, if I factor out the GCF, I'm going to factor out 8x What's left behind? This is going to be x plus 1. Then looking at the right side, they're both negative. So if I factor out a negative 1, I'm going to get x plus 1 left behind. So notice, right, since these inside the parentheses match, that's how we know we're on the right track. So the factors are going to be the outside parts. 8x minus 1, and then the inside parts, x plus 1. Here are the factors. If you FOIL this back out, we'll get the original answer, the original question, 8x squared plus 7x minus 1. Okay, let's look at number 7. b squared plus 12b plus 36. Um... I feel like the same method would work. Two numbers that multiply to make 36 that add up to 12. So 36 that add to 12. They're both positive. So 6 and 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 plus 6 is 12. So let's split up this middle term. B squared plus 6B plus 6B plus 36. All right, split it down the middle. Factor out the greatest common factor. So it would be B. Left behind is B plus 6. Right-hand side. Uh, looks like a 6 will come out for sure. And then left behind is going to be B plus 6. And again, it matches, so we know we're on the right path. So B plus 6, that's the outside part. Here, I'll square it for you. So that's that part. 
and then the parentheses inside that part that matches is the other factor so b plus six you could write this as b plus six squared let's, let's look at 11. so 6n squared minus 14n plus 8. They're all even, so that's a good thing. I, we can factor out a 2. So if I pull out a 2, what's left behind? 3n squared minus 7n plus 4. All right, so let's think about this for a moment. So... If we multiply 3 times 4, that gives us 12. And we want to add up to negative 7. So 3 and 4 is what jumps out at me, right? 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. But I need negative 7. So we need both of these to be negative. Alright, so that means we can write this as 3 and squared. We'll split up negative 7 into negative 3n, negative 4n, plus 4. Okay, split this down the middle. We can factor the first two terms. So the 2 is just hanging out. Like, that's going to be just there. So if we can pull out a 3n, right, GCF. What's left behind? n minus 1. Okay, I know I need n minus 1 to show up again. Um, this first term is negative or technically the, the third term so I'm gonna pull out a negative 4 and what's left behind n minus 1 we just check ourselves for a moment negative 4 times n negative 4 negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 so we're good so we can rewrite this as 2 3n minus 4 3n minus 4 and then the part inside the parentheses, n minus 1. Okay, number 14, my favorite, completing the square. Okay, first thing I want to check to see if a is, is 1. In this case, a is 1. So there's nothing else we really have to do there. So that's good. All right, I'm going to take half of b. b is, ne is positive 4. So... 4, when I take half of it, I'm going to get 2. All right, this is a very important number. This is going to come up in a little bit. So when we square it, we're going to get 4. 4 is the number I need to add to both sides. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x. All right, the negative 14, I'm going to move to the other side of the equal sign. So it's going to be positive 14 on the right-hand side. Okay, I need to add 4 to both sides. Add 4, add 4. The left-hand side is guaranteed to factor into whatever the star was. All right, so this is going to be x plus 2. Because it was a pos the star was positive over here, it's going to be x plus 2 squared equals 14 plus 4 is... 18. All right. Simply solve for x by taking a square root. Square root of both sides. So x plus 2 is equal to square root of 18, plus or minus. So 18, we can factor this. 2, 9, 3, and 3. So I can pull out a 3. So plus or minus 3 root 2. So 18 is equal to... 3 root 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. We're going to get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 3 root 2. That's not bad. Let's hope for a to be 1 all the time, right? When a is 1, it's very nice. Um, 15. Can this be reduced? 4. 21, 18. No, it cannot. So I think if we move the 18 over, right, make it negative 18 equals 0. This is my A 
B and C. So this is definitely quadratic formula stuff right here. So quadratic formula says negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we're just plugging in values that we know. So negative, negative 21 plus or minus square root negative 21 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 18 all over 2 times 4. Okay, simplify. And technically this is a non-calculator work, so let's just simplify. So it's going to be 21 plus or minus, what's 21 squared? 21 times 21 2, 0, 2, 1, or 2, 4, rather. 441, 441, so square root, 441. So there's two negatives, so right because of negative 18, that's going to make this plus. And then 4 times 4 times 18, so whatever 16 times 18 is, so let's check that out. So 16 times 18, 48, 10, 8, 1, 288, all over 6. No, 2 times 4 is 8. All right, we can simplify 441 and 288. It's going to be 729. It's kind of a nice number. So 729 over 8. 729 is actually a perfect square, believe it or not. It's um square root of 20. The square root of 729 is 27. So 21, 21 plus or minus... 27 over 8. So the two answers are going to be 21 plus 27. That's 48 d divided by 8. Or 21 minus 27. So negative 6 over 8. And both of these are reducible. So this is going to be 6 or negative three-fourths so those are our answers for number 15 all right let's look at 17 so 17 is not that bad so if I add 40 to both sides we're gonna get x squared is equal to 45, take a square root, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 45. 45 is 9 times 5, so I can pull out a 3 basically. So 3 root 5, plus or minus 3 root 5. Okay, let's look at number 9. Actually, 19, my bad. Let's look at number 19. It's kind of the same thing. Minus 36 from both sides. So 3, x minus 2 squared. So this is negative 36 divided by 3, both sides. Right, I can do anything I want to either side as long as I do it to both sides. 3's cancel. So it's going to be x minus 2 squared is equal to negative 12. Take a square root. We have x minus 2 equals plus or minus. So negative is inside the square root. That's going to come out as i. So root 12i. Add 2 to both sides. x is equal to 
plus or minus twelve can be written as three times four, so we're going to pull out a two. Two root three i. So x is equal to two plus or minus two root three i. All right, 21, finding the roots or solutions of a function. So here, the work is going to be combining everything to one side. So I want to add, so I want to add 3x squared to both sides. Going to subtract 4x from both sides and add 1 to both sides. So on the right hand side, we're going to get 0. Left hand side, 18x squared minus 6x minus 4. Okay, we want to find the roots. So this is nice because since it's equal to 0, they're all even. So we could actually take out a 2. So divide everything by 2. 9x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so is this factorable? Is this factorable? That's the question. So do I want to go straight to quadratic formula or do I want to attempt to factor this thing? So let's see. If we try to factor it, 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. And I need two numbers that multiply to make negative 18, but add up to negative 3. So what do we have? 18 and 1. 9 and 2. 6 and 3. So it's going to be 6 and 3. So negative 6 and positive 3. Negative 6 and positive 3. So let's see. 9x squared. I'm going to split up negative 3 into negative 6x plus 3x minus 2. Right, all I did was break up that negative 3 using the terms I just figured out. Okay. Split it down the middle. Factor the GCF out of the right two terms. So I can pull out a 3 and an x. What's left behind? Another 3x minus 2, All right? Because 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Write two terms. Uh, it's positive, so I'm going to pull out a positive. Well, I can't pull out anything, right? No, no 3, no 2. So in this case, we're just going to pull out a 1. We're factoring out a 1. If you can't pull out anything, you pull out a 1. And since we didn't pull out anything, well, technically we, we pulled out a 1, the parentheses are going to stay the same, 3x minus 2. And that is what was expected, right? Because the parentheses always must match. So what's, let's consolidate. So the part inside the parentheses, 3x minus 2. And then the parts outside the parentheses, 3x plus 1. 3x plus 1. So this is equal to 0. We're looking for the roots. So I have to set each of these equal to 0. So 3x minus 2 equals 0. And then 3x plus 1 equals 0. So adding 2 to both sides, I get 3x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 over 3. Subtract 1 from both sides. So 3x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. x is going to equal negative one-third. So the roots are two-thirds and negative one-third. It's not bad. All right, let's see. 22 or 23. Well, I said I'd do the odds. So there's a fraction. So let's just do it. All right, so it's positive. So it opens upward. So that means it's going to have a min for sure. It's going to have a min. 
um, first thing I'm thinking is that I want to find the vertex. So the vertex, the x component is negative b over 2a. Uh, so look, a being a fraction doesn't even mean anything to us. Well, actually, I take that back. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so b is negative 6. A is one-fifth. Okay, so let's plug this in. So negative B. So B is negative 6 by default over 2 times one-fifth. All right, so we have a, a complex fraction, right? Fraction inside of a fraction. The negatives are going to cancel. Or negative times negative is a positive. Over, so we multiply straight across. So we're going to get 2 over 5. So if you remember, keep change flip. Keep the top. Change it to multiplication. Flip the bottom. So 5 over 2. So this is going to be 30 over 2, which is 15. Right, which is 15. So that means that the x value is going to be 15. we got to figure out the y value. So how do we figure out the y value? by plugging x back into the original. So 1 fifth times 15 squared minus 6 times 15 plus 4. All right, 15 times 15. I feel like that's 225. Is this a calculator part? No, it's not. All right, so 15 times 15. I think it's 225. 5, carry the 2. 7, 1, 12, 225. I don't even know if that's what I said, but all right, 225. So 1 fifth times 225 minus 6 times 15. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90 plus 4. Okay, 5 is going to cancel. Oops. 5 is going to cancel, so 5 goes into 22 four times, and then 5 goes into 25, 5. So 5 goes into 225 a total of 45 times. So this is basically 45 minus 90 plus 4. That's convenient that 45 is half of 90, so we're going to have negative 45 plus 4, which means negative 41. So that means that the minimum is at x equals 15 and y equals negative 40, 41. Why did I put 144? I don't know. So negative 41. Right, so the min value is negative 41. It occurs when x is equal to 15. Okay, simplify. It gets a lot easier from here. So number 25, we're just combining like terms. So 4 minus 2i. This will distribute the negative will. So negative 5 plus 3i. Just combining like terms. 4 and negative 5, negative 1. Negative 2 and 3, plus i. Easy peasy. All right, 27. Okay, i to the 75th power. So the trick is knowing that i is recursive, right? So i to the first power is just i i to the second power, negative 1, i cubed, negative i, and i to the fourth power is 1. And then it'll repeat. i to the fifth power would be i, 6 would be negative 1, and so on and so forth. So what we do is we take 75 divided by 4, and we're looking at the remainder. 4 goes into 7 once. 7 minus 4 is 3. Bring down the 5. 4 goes into 35. 8. So 32. So 3. So 
remainder is three. So let's think about that. That's gonna be I cubed, right? I cubed. So this is gonna be, since it's remainder three, one, two, three. So negative I, negative I. All right, 29, three over two plus I. All right, I want to get rid of I from the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate, two minus I, top and bottom. Okay, so top's gonna to be three, two minus I. Bottom's gonna be, so when we're multiplying by a conjugate, you don't necessarily have to foil everything out like usual. This will be two times two, which is four, then I times negative I, which is gonna be negative I squared. But we know that I squared is equal to negative one. So this right here is negative one, which means four plus one. So three, two minus I over four plus one, which would be five. So just remember, Multiply by the conjugate when i is in the denominator, the bottom. Always change the sign of the i, not the real part. So let's get some more practice. So here's a little bit more complicated one. So number 31. Um, looking at the denominator. So the conjugate, 2 plus 3i. I'm going to multiply that times the top and bottom, two plus three i. Okay, let's start with the top. So here we do have to, three times two, six, i times three i, so it's gonna be plus three i squared, which we know i squared is negative one. Bottom, two times two, four. Negative three times positive three, negative nine i squared. Again, that's negative one. So we're, top, we're gonna get six minus three because of the negative one part. And the bottom's gonna be four plus nine. Again, because of the negative one part. So six minus three is three, four plus nine, 13. So the answer is 3 over 13. Not bad. Uh, 32. Let's do 32. 32 is important. Okay, give the nature of the roots for the given discriminant. Remember, the discriminant, that is the part that is inside the square root of the quadratic formula. Specifically, the part inside the square root. So, all right. So remember, discriminant, part inside the square root only. So if the discriminant is positive, right, the discriminant if it's positive, you have two roots. If the discriminant is equal to zero, you have one root. And if the discriminant is less than zero, you have two imaginary roots. Okay, so discriminant 36, the nature of the roots, we're gonna have two real roots. I guess I should have said that here, real. And that's because the discriminant is positive, right? This is bigger than zero. All right, here we have discriminant equal to zero. So the discriminant is zero. We have one real root. Okay, 33 is basically the same question, but it is a picture. So A, 
crosses the x-axis twice. So this has two real roots. That's what this means. So the discriminant here would be positive. B, it touches the x-axis at one spot. So there's one real root. So we know it's going to be 0. And here, C, it doesn't touch. It doesn't cross the x-axis at all. It's above it. So we know here the discriminant must be negative. Right, this is just applying the same idea we used in 32 about the discriminant. Two roots, one root, and no roots. No real roots. Mm. All right, 34 is pretty important too, I guess. So let's look at 34. 34 is important. All right, so we want to use the discriminant to find values of C for two roots, one real root, and two imaginary roots. So check it out. A is 2, B is 5, C is unknown, C is C. So all we're looking at is the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. So if we plug in the values we know, so B is 5, so 5 squared minus 4A, which is 2, and then C. So 25 minus 8C. Let's just look at when it's greater than 0. So when it's greater than 0, minus 25 minus 25, we're going to get negative 8c is greater than negative 25. I'm solving for c because I want to know what, make, what value for c makes is true. So we're dividing both sides by negative 8. When I divide by a negative, got to flip the sign. So c is going to be less than 25 eighths. Okay, when it's equal to 0, so... When C is less than 25 eighths, we know that it's going to have two real roots. So C, any value less than 25 eighths. One real solution, when C is equal to 25 over 8, and then two imaginary roots, when C is greater than, right? it's got to be the opposite. So 25 over 8, that's basically the turning point. I give you a little visual here. So when x when when c 25 over 8, right? So there's three scenarios. You're either equal to it or you're on the right of it or the left of it. So depending on where what value for c is compared to 25 over 8 will tell you how many roots you have or not. Two roots, one root or no roots. Okay. Write a quadrant 35. Write an equation for the given conditions using the most appropriate form. Hmm. All right, so I'm thinking vertex form. Vertex form is a x minus h squared plus k. So A, we're just plugging in values for H and K. So X minus 5 squared minus 4. Right, it's going to be y equals. That's the uh, that's the part we're missing. So x and y, right? So 20 equals a. Well, that we have to solve for that. X is going to be one minus five squared minus four. So solving for a, we're going to get one minus five is four, negative four. So negative four squared minus 4. So negative 4 squared is 16. So let's 
So 20, a 16 minus four. So this is multiplication. So you can't, mul you can't subtract four from 16. It doesn't work that way. You have to add four to both sides. So 24 is equal to a times 16. Divide both sides by 16. This is gonna be a is equal to So 24 over 16 is basically <coughs> 12 over 8, 6 over 4, 3 over 2. So the answer, the final answer, the quadratic given these conditions is going to be y equals 3 halves x minus 5 squared minus four. Okay. 36 is pretty important. Um, let's see. So given the graph, let's do the, the three, the three different forms. All right. Hopefully this is exact. So let's see. Vertex, I'm just highlighting the important parts, right? Like the vertex is going to be so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It would be, it would be in the middle. So 12.5, we'll just call it 12.5. So negative 1, 12.5. That's unfortunate. All right, so this is going to be, what is this? 2, x equals 2, comma 0, 1, 2, 3. So negative 3, comma 0. All right, so let's think about some things real quick. Um, I'm given the roots, right? I know the roots. Negative 3 and 2. Negative 3 and 2. So this means, this means that x plus 3 is a root, x minus 2 is also, well, since 2 is a root, x minus 2 is a factor. Since negative 3 is a root, x plus 3 is a factor. So we want this to equal, so right, there's an A out here that we need. Um, so we can use this X and this Y. We can just plug that in and solve for, solve for A basically. So this is gonna be A negative one plus three, negative one minus two. And this is gonna equal Y, which is 12.5. Okay, so we have negative 1 plus 3 is going to be 2. So a times 2, negative 1, negative 2, that's negative 3. This needs to equal 12.5. All right, so we have a. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So negative 6a. is equal to 12.5. So A is going to be whatever 12 divided by 12.5 divided by 6. What if we modify this and just say 12? Let's make life easy. So if it's just 12, A is going to be negative 2. Hey, look at that. All right, so intercept form, negative 2 x plus 3, x minus 2. I like it. All right, standard form, we FOIL everything out. FOIL everything out and, and see what we get. So x times x is x squared. Negative 2x plus 3x 
minus 6. And all of this is going to be times negative 2 eventually. So combining like terms, we're going to get just x in the middle. So negative 2x squared plus x minus 6 equals, all right, we've arrived at our answer. We're distributing the negative 2. Negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 12. There's the standard form. All right, vertex form. Vertex form. It's going to be a little trickier. Um, is there a faster way to do this? That's the question. Like, I know how to. What if we use... What if we use... Well, we're going to have to complete the square. There's really no way around it. So, this is going to be so negative 2x minus 2x plus 12. Let's just set this equal to 0. So, I want to complete the square. All right. To complete the square, a term needs to be 1. So, I got to divide everything by negative 2. So, this is going to mean x squared plus, right, because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is plus x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, I got to take half of b. So right now b is 1. When I take half of it, I get 1 half. So this 1 half is very important. It's going to show up later. When I square it, I'm going to get, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 fourth. All right, that's the value I have to add to both sides. So this means, look, I'm going to erase this. This means that x squared plus x, so I'm, I'm going to move the 6 momentarily. So I'm adding 1 fourth to both sides. That's going to be 6 and 1 fourth, right, because you're adding it. All right, this side is guaranteed to factor into the star. So this is going to be x plus 1 half squared equals 6 and 1 fourth which is basically 25 fourths. All right, I'm going to subtract that back over to the left side. 25 over 4. I'm just moving it back over. So subtracted. So this is going to equal y. Tens is going to equal 0, but it could equal whatever. But this, at the end of the day, is our vertex form. All right, for, it's equal to y. Actually, all of these are equal to y. Okay, we're almost done. Calculator part. So what am I going to do? Let's just look at 37 to 38. Okay, well, let's do 37, see how we feel afterwards. Okay, model rocket competition. Ms. Jennings launches a rocket upward from the ground, initial velocity, 96 feet per second. Formula for vertical motion is this equation here. Gravitational constant, A, is negative 32 feet per second. V is the initial velocity. S is the initial height. T is measured in seconds. Okay, so write a function that describes the height, h and feet, of the rocket's t seconds into the launch. So graph of the position of the rocket as the function of time into launch. All right, so A is, let's see, let's get some Let's gather our thoughts. So write the function that describes. Okay, so h of t is equal to 1 half, like 0 0.5, times negative 32 t squared plus v, which is the initial velocity, 96 t plus s. So the initial height. 
so I'm guessing she was standing on the ground. Oh yeah, upward from the ground. So plus zero because she's on the ground. All right, so simplifying, we're going to get negative 16 t squared plus 96 t. This is the function that models the height. All right, so if we graph it, if we graph it, it's going to look like this, roughly. This is T, this is H. Okay. We know that the max is when negative B over 2A. So if B is 96 and A is negative 16, we get negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. All right, and this is a calculator section so we are granted access to a calculator all right so the negatives are going to cancel so 96 over 32 which is three that's nice so when t is equal to three it reaches its max height of, we have to take 3 and plug it back into the equation. So 3 squared plus 96 times 3. Which is 144. So how high is the rocket after 2 seconds into launch? So... Plug that into our calculator. Just plug in 2 instead of 3. So it's 128 feet. When does it reach this height again? Show work and or describe calculator steps used. Okay. So let's think about this for a moment. All right. Looking at the graph, I know that it is an axis of symmetry. It's supposed to be symmetrical, right? So at two seconds, so one, two, that's when it reaches 128 feet. So if it's symmetrical, that means so the, it's one unit away from the axis of symmetry on both sides. So four seconds. So four seconds. So show work and or describe. So show work. What 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 work is there to show? Um, so all right. So the work's gonna look like this, right? We plug in two seconds. Plug in two seconds, we get 128. And because because what? Because two seconds is one second left of axis of symmetry. One second right of the axis of symmetry, it has to be, right? Like, that's just the way quadratics work. So, one second right of axis of symmetry. is 128 feet as well. And I feel no one can argue with that. Who can argue with that? No one. Okay, how high does the rocket go? Ever? Well, that's going to be the max. So what do we say? 144, right? 144 was the max. So 144 feet. How long does it take to reach its highest point? three seconds. That's the 
vert the x the x component of the vertex show work and or okay so c b above how long does the rocket stay in the air okay well again axis of symmetry if it reaches its highest point at three seconds then it's going to take three seconds to come down so this is going to be um six seconds basically what i just said three seconds for the max three seconds to come down right it's the way it works Mm. All right, Mrs. McLeod launches her rocket from a platform 20 feet high with a different initial velocity. Whose rocket goes higher and by how much? Okay, so we're going to adjust our original function. So the origin, so this function is going to be h is equal to negative 16t squared plus 130t plus 20. Okay, let's look at the vertex for this one. So vertex is going to be B and A. So negative B, negative 130 over 2A, negative 16. So this is going to be 130 over 32. So 130 divided by 32. So about four seconds. 4.0625 if you want to be precise. 4.0625. So if we plug that in to the function, let's see. We know that it that that's the max. So let's see, negative sixteen four point zero six two five squared plus one thirty times four point zero six two five plus twenty. 284, hers went higher. So that's the X. This is the Y. Miss McLeod's went higher. By how much? Well, 284 minus 144, 140 feet. So by 140 feet. Right, 284 minus 144, All right, let's skip 38, 39. All right, given that the roots of a quadratic function are negative two-thirds and six, write the standard form of the quadratic function. So we just need a, a function. So if they give me the roots, so x is equal to negative two-thirds and x is equal to six, the factors are gonna be x plus two-thirds x minus 6. Okay, I can clear the fraction on the right or correction the left. Right, if I multiply this by 3, this is going to be 3x plus 2. Right, all I'm doing is just swinging up the 3. x minus 6. These are still factors, still the roots. Um, let's, we want it in standard form. So if we FOIL this out, we're going to get 
3x squared minus 18x plus 2x minus 12, minus 12. Combining like terms, three x squared minus sixteen x minus twelve. There it is. I feel like that's it. That's the answer. Standard form. All right, write the vertex form of this guy here. Okay, so vertex form, it's completing the square, really. If, if you complete the square, then it's going to work. So half of 6, right, half of B is going to be 3. So this is important. We're going to square it. Um, this is going to be 9. So that's the number I'm going to add to both sides. So x squared plus 6x. I'm going to move the 4 over. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So left-hand side is guaranteed to factor into whatever the star was, x plus 3. Right-hand side is going to be 5. So now if I move it back, if I move it back to the left, the vertex form is going to look like x plus 3 squared minus 5. All right, 41. Find the discriminant, determine the nature of the roots. Okay, we've got to move everything left. That's the only way this is going to work. So 4x squared minus 8x plus 13 equals 0. So A, B, C. I'm just looking at the discriminant. So the discriminant is going to be B squared. So negative 8 squared minus 4AC. So 64 minus whatever 16 times 13 is. We're still in the calculator part. So 16 times... 13, 208. Okay, 64 minus 208. Negative 144. So discriminant is negative 144. It's negative. We'll have two imaginary roots. I'm not worried about 42. I guess we'll do 43. 43 is pretty important. I don't really care about 44. So let's look at 43. Um, baseball game, an outfielder throws a ball. It's modeled by this function here. For approximately how many seconds was the ball in the air? So basically, we need to figure out the roots. So A, B, C. Quadratic formula, 100%. So negative B, plus or minus, B squared, so 19.6 squared, minus 4A, C, 1.3 all over 2 times negative 
All right, so if you use the plus sign, you're going to get a negative number. If you use a negative sign, you're going to get approximately four seconds. What is the highest the ball reaches? So again, that's going to be negative B over 2A. So negative B, so negative 19.6 over 2 times negative 19 point Oh, negative 4.6, 4.9, negative 4.9. So we have, the negative is going to cancel, 19.6, 2 times 4.9, 2. So at x equals 2, or in this case t, when t equals 2, at time 2, that's when it reaches its highest point. So 2 seconds. That's the second part of the question, right? What's the highest the ball reaches? So let's take 2 and plug it into the original. So negative 4.9, 2 squared, plus 19.6 times 2 plus 1.3, 20.9 feet. At what times is the ball 15 meters or higher? Okay. So we want basically 15 or higher. So negative 4.9 t squared plus 19.6t plus 1.3. Okay, so let's check this out. So what we're going to do, minus 15 from both sides. So we're going to get 0, greater than or equal. Negative 4.9t squared plus 19.6t. 1.3 minus 15. So 14, 13 negative 13.7 okay so we have kind of a new quadratic here um, we have to solve this so if you go up on your calculator to when you did the original quadratic and for the C value where it's 1.3 let's use negative 13.7 So scrolling up, selecting it, and I'm changing 1.3. I'm changing that to negative 13.7. Right, all I'm doing is plugging this into the quadratic formula. But I'm using the fact that I've already used the quadratic formula once to just change the value. So one of the values is 3 seconds. And then I select it again, and I change the negative to positive. So this is when you use the negative version, three seconds. The positive version, right, the part that's in between the plus or minus part, so I'm changing that to plus, you get 0.9 seconds, so roughly one. So at three and one second, does it reach 15 meters? I guess this isn't feet, this is meters. <clears throat> How high is the ball at 3.5 seconds? So we're plugging in 3.5 into the original formula. So when I plug in 3.5 into the original formula, I get 
so 10 meters roughly, or we'll just call it that, 9.875 meters. So let's think about this. The ball went up. The vertex is at, what do we say the vertex was? The vertex was at two seconds. So at two seconds. So 3.5 seconds to the right of two is actually 1.5, right? So 1.5 seconds this way gives us three. If I go 1.5 seconds to the left of two, that's going to give us at half a second at 0.5. So at 0.5 of a second, it is also at 9.875, right? Knowing the properties of a quadratic really come in clutch. All right, I think this is sufficient to get through the test tomorrow. I know it's late, but better late than never. All right, guys, good luck.